I want to do one more example of strong induction. It'll be uh, one or two more videos. It's about the game of NIM, which is a great uh, mathematical game. It's probably the most fundamental mathematical game. Um, and let me tell you how to just play a slightly streamlined version of NIM. Uh, you've got two piles of pretzels, pretzel sticks. Doesn't really matter. They can be classically they're called match sticks or something like that. But pretzels are much more fun to eat. Um, and you have two players. And you take turns playing. And each of a play, a move, just consists of taking any number, any desired number of uh, sticks from one of the piles, and presumably eating them since they're yummy pretzels. Um, and the um, the loser is the first one who doesn't have a move. And so, in other words, the winner is the one who takes the last pretzel or pretzels. Now, I have to say, there's other versions of NIM, and in, in play, in practice, the other version might be more common where the, that's the loser. The loser is the one who's forced to make the last move. But it's easier to analyze if we say the winner is the one who takes the last move, and the loser is the person who just can't make a legal move, OK, because there's no pretzels left. Now, in more complicated versions, uh, you have more than two piles. You can have as many piles as you want. Um, and so let's just uh, do an example of playing. So if that's the starting configuration, maybe player one uh, maybe takes three out of there, leaves that pile alone. The key thing is you can't take pretzels from more than one pile in, in one play. Uh, player two maybe takes uh, one pretzel out of there. Back to player one takes uh, two pretzels um, out of that pile. Maybe player two takes one pretzel out of this pile. Player one takes um, maybe all the pretzels out of this pile. I'll say empty set for that. And then player two wins, because they can just take that last one. So clearly, that was not a great move on player one's part to take all of the of one of the piles. It's a pretty bad strategy there. Okay, but that's how a game would work if people are not really thinking about it too hard. Okay, so what I want to show you is a special case of NIM strategy, probably the simplest case, um, and it it's really easy to generalize to something that will get you that will make you win NIM against anybody who hasn't thought about it. Um, almost, almost always. Um, And let me just show you, without giving you any hints, let me just show you uh, play. Let's say there's five in each pile. Let me show you uh, play an example of winning two using the winning strategy. And the, the, the theorem is going to be that, that in certain cases, player two always has a winning strategy. So player one, let's say, just takes maybe three out of the first pile. Player two takes three out of the second pile. Player one takes one out of the first pile. Player two takes one out of the second pile. Player one takes one out of the second pile. Player two wins. So if you watch that and you had some inkling that player two knew what she was doing, can you figure out what's what's going on and why did it work? Does it always work or is there something special about the starting board? Good place to pause the video. Okay. So what was special about the starting board is that they had equal numbers. Um, in other words, it's a symmetric situation. And what did that allow player two to do? Whatever player one did to one pile, take out three there, take out three there. Take out one, take out one, take out one, take out one. And there's two things that, that's crucial about that is um, because it was symmetric, you there was it was it's meaningful, it makes sense for player two to do the exact same thing in the other pile. And that that returns it to symmetry, and then player one is back in a situation like right here after player two's moved, player two's back in the symmetric situation. And if player one is paying attention, they might eventually figure out, oh man, why do I keep getting in this symmetric situation? I hate being in a symmetric situation because then whatever I do, player two can mirror, and that gets me back in a symmetric situation. That sounds like induction. Sounds like 
five and five is a provable loser for number one. In other words, a winner for number two, because two and two was a loser for number one, a winner for number two, because one and one was a winner for number two. And in a sense, because getting to this situation, empty, empty is a loser for number one, and therefore a winner for number two. So this is kind of the base case. This is going to be one of those cases where the base case is super trivial because it's just the observation if there's no sticks player one has already lost okay so we just want to take that intuition of um describing it as a sort of a verbal game strategy if you see symmetric position in the for the other guy you're good because whatever he does mirror and repeat we just want to turn that into a proof uh, a careful proof using strong induction in the next and i think last video on this little series